Hi guys, uh, my name is Simon Leader and I am a professional rugby coach. Uh, over the years I've done several different jobs for Barracudas on camp as an area manager. I've worked in the stores, I've even done a bit of work up in the head office. Uh, and I've been asked to come in and just do some videos for you with regards to some rugby skills uh, that you can be working on over the summer while sadly the Barracudas camps are not running. So what I've done is I've put together a series of different clips um, with some different skills, some little challenges in there, and hopefully you can build up your, your rugby skills from there um, and see how you get on. Uh, hopefully this is gonna be nice and interactive and so if there's any feedback that you've got or if you wanna share some of your skills video with us, uh, then please do, I'm, I'm really excited to see what you come up with. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Right guys, here we go then, session one. This is all about familiarisation of your rugby ball. So all you need to do is get yourself hold of a ball, ideally the right size for your age group. If not, any ball will do. I've got a football here as well, that'll work just as well. But if you've got a rugby ball, all the better. So all we're doing is just getting used to touching and moving the ball around our body. Whoops, both ways. Okay, as fast as you can go. Let's get it up around our heads, side to side, and then around. Let's get it through our legs. So all the while, what I, as you'll notice, is I'm not looking at the ball. This is all about getting to know how the ball moves, getting those grips right between your hands and without looking at it. So it's about your hand-eye coordination, okay? As I say, all around your body, loads of different skills. Just get used to holding the ball. If you've got a smaller ball, then this will test your skills even further because it's just harder. So this time you might need to look at it a bit more, again, around your body. It's just about understanding how where they go that way around, how you can move the ball and get used to having those touches on the ball. Okay, next thing, what we will talk about next week is a little bit about passing and we'll develop our passing skills. And for that, we need to focus on the 10 points of contact. So we're not flat handed on the ball, we're getting our points of contact with our fingers. And one really good way of working on that as a start point is just moving and getting that control of the ball. Ideally, can you see the ball is not moving? It shouldn't be moving very much at all. And then when you get really good at that, you're just looking to then start to move the ball and move it from hand to hand to hand to hand to hand to hand. Okay, a few skills to be getting on with. Now we'll have a look at a bit of a challenge for you. Okay, so this is called the figure of eight. So we stand with our feet nice and wide apart. Come a little bit closer. We're gonna grip the ball like this. And the idea is that we lift the ball up and we catch it again. So you're looking to transfer the ball around like that. What I want you to do is have a go and see how many you can do in 30 seconds and the highest score wins. See how you go, good luck. Working. So last time we talked a little bit about our grip on the ball. So what we want is 10 points of contact. So that's our fingers and thumbs on both hands rather than flat palms on the ball like that, okay? So we want a nice grip like that so we can then manipulate and move the ball as we want to. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at to work on that is we're gonna look at our one-handed grip, so it's five points of contact. And all you need for this is a ball, again, ideally your size for your age group if you can. If not, don't worry, just any ball will do, and a tennis ball. And all you're gonna do is find a nice flat piece of ground, get your tennis ball, and you're just gonna to look to bounce the ball up and down. And then you're gonna change over when you can to both hands, and then when you get better, you change it a little bit quicker, maybe three bounces and then maybe one, okay? So all the while, <clears throat> what you're doing is you're focusing on that grip of the ball, and that, as I say, helps you just move forward and getting that controlled movement, so it's that development on, okay? Next thing you're gonna do, you just need the ball this time, so you can put your, put your tennis ball down. So you're gonna just look to move the ball from hand to hand. Again, it's those five points of contact, not gripping it with a flat palm, just moving the ball from side to side. Don't worry about spinning for the time being. You can see mine is doing that. That's just how I'm flicking my fingers. You can just move it back and forth nice and flat as well, okay? Get a little bit of height if you want. Then you can start to add that little bit of spin. So as we let go of the ball, we just flick our fingers like that as well. So just mix it up between a normal pass and a little flicked spin pass like that as well, okay? Next, following on from that, we're gonna add the tennis ball again and we're gonna do a little bit of juggling. So all we're doing, is we're looking to move the rug ball up, pass the tennis ball over. Rug ball up, tennis ball over. Rug ball up, tennis ball over. Rug ball up, tennis ball over. And then as you develop that and get better, what you can start to do is put that little spin in that we just talked about. Spin, catch, spin, catch, spin, catch. Okay? 
So the idea of this is that we're focusing all our focus <coughs> on the rugby ball, so our hand-eye coordination is working. And when we move on to our challenge, which is the next bit, we're going to start to take our eye focus away from the rugby ball and see if we can transfer it without looking at it. Okay, so now for your challenge. Now this is tough, but it would be really good to work on for your hand-eye coordination and your skills with the ball. So what we did before when we were doing the juggling is we were moving the rugby ball up in the air and passing the tennis ball across. So all our focus was still on this rugby ball because we know that we can pass the tennis ball back and forth without looking at it. Now we're going to take our attention away from the rugby ball and onto the tennis ball so that the skill between of passing the rugby ball from hand to hand becomes a bit more of an instinctive, natural thing. So we're going to, we need a flat wall here. So I'm just going to use the side of the house. You need your tennis ball and your rugby ball. So the tennis ball goes against the wall and you hand over the rugby ball and catch the tennis ball. Okay, again, against the wall, hand over the rugby ball. Against the wall, hand over. Against the wall, hand over. So all the while, you're not looking at the ball. Once you get good at that, the next trick is to throw the ball against the wall and put a bit more air on the rugby ball. It's much, much harder. So against the wall, up and catch. Against the wall, up and catch okay it is tricky it will look a bit scruffy the idea is that what we're trying to get to is when we throw that tennis ball we can then spin that ball into this hand and this becomes a natural movement for us it is tricky it's deliberately tricky it's a challenge have a go see how you get on and let us know and i'll see you on the next video And this video is all about challenges. So what we wanna do is we wanna get creative and see how good we can be at doing some different skills in and around the house. So the first one is all about uh, how high we can move the ball and catch it without moving off the spot. So the first one, nice and simply, need a bit of space around us. We're just looking to throw the ball up and catch it without moving. Throw the ball up and catch it without moving. Up and catch it without moving. The challenge is to see how high you can get it, see if you can get it up as high as your house or higher. Uh, so just see how high you can go. If you can video it a bit lower and show us how high you can go even better. Don't worry about technique. We'll talk about passing next week. We're just looking to get it in the air. So whether you want to throw it up and catch it like a high ball or whether you want to try that spin pass, that's up to you. Second one, the kicking challenge. Again, not worried about technique. You can kick it through the ball like that. I prefer to kick it end over end. And we're just looking again to try and go up and catch it without moving off the spot. Up, and catch it. Try both feet if you can. Up, that wasn't very good. Up, and catch it on the spot. Up, and catch it on the spot. Just challenge yourselves, see what you can come up with, and how about these for a few extra challenges indoors. Right, okay, I hope you got on all right with all those challenges. Uh, now we're gonna move on from that ball familiarization into some passing technique. So the first thing we're gonna look at today is the push pass. And for this, we're gonna need a wall and a round ball. So if you've got a football, great. If you've got a handball, netball, basketball, anything like that will do. Uh, some of you may have some of the half rugby balls, which have got one flat edge and then the other half of a normal rugby ball, which you can use as well. But as I say, any kind of round ball will do for this. So all we're looking at uh, is getting our technique right. Um, so as I say, we're gonna need a flat wall and a round ball. The reason being is that we're gonna be passing against the wall and we want the ball to come back to us so we're not chasing a rubber ball around all over the place. So all we're looking at is we want a target on our wall which is roughly in line with our chest, as we point across, roughly in line with our chest. So I've got a nice block there, which I'm looking at and I'm gonna aim for. Okay, now we're just gonna take a few steps away and we're just gonna be pushing the wall across our body. So for this, we need to make sure our elbow is nice and high. Um, and all we're doing is we're looking to push, actually hit a nail in the wall there. We're looking to push straight back again. Push straight back. So the reason we push our elbow nice and high is to focus on that push rather than a swing. If we start swinging, 
we've got to make sure our time is absolutely bang on because if we let the ball go too early it goes down if we let it go too late it goes up so we get a nice high elbow and we push it so the ball should travel along that plane okay don't forget as well that you want to make sure you go off both hands same principle okay so get get some reps in just stood still okay next thing when you feel like you're comfortable and comfortable doing that I'm just going to add a little walk into it so as he's walking through, we're looking at the target elbow high and we push through and carry on. Okay, again, so we come through, looking to target elbow high and we push the ball through. Just get a few reps of that. Again, don't forget to go off the other hand and then we can build it from there. If you've got someone with you and you're working in the garden with someone else, maybe a brother, sister, uh, a parent, whoever it may be, what you can do is you can carry on with this theme of walking in, they can throw you that pass and then you get your elbow high and you push the ball across. I'm here by myself, so I'm just happy to lift it to myself, carry on walking and push it through, okay? One little trick to make sure you can do, because in a game, this is nice and easy obviously here because I can manipulate my situation and walking in. In a game, we're gonna be moving a lot quicker. So let's step the pace up a little bit. But one thing that we wanna do is practice passing off what we call our closed hip, okay? So it's all well and good when we get here and we can put our outside foot forward which allows our body to turn and push the ball into that space but actually often in a game it might be that we need to pass when we've got our uh, inside leg forwards so our body is actually pointing straight or slightly off to this side so we've got to learn to be able to actually use our shoulders our arms and our power there to move the ball as opposed to our hips and our momentum of our body so let's just try it so we come on our closed hip that wasn't great let's try again so we're coming in, elbow high, closed hip, and we're still getting that technique right. Again, make sure we go back off the other hand, um, but just a few things to try there, okay? So remembering to keep the elbow high, pushing the ball across, so we're not swinging a pass, we're pushing it, and just try it with a bit of walk, a bit of a jog, and then try it off that closed hip to really make sure we're working those arms and shoulders. Right, okay, I uh, hope you got on all right with the push pass. Uh, now what we're gonna do is have a look at uh, how we develop our spin pass. Okay, so some of you out there may well have been playing rugby for a long while. Some of you might be quite new to it. Either way, we're gonna start at the basics and build up. Some of you might be quite competent and comfortable spinning the ball, but I'm just gonna show you a couple of little techniques and tricks that you can do to help develop that uh, and just make sure that, that we're doing it effectively. So the first thing that people often get wrong is how they try and spin the ball. <clears throat> so if I just step back a little bit here, what we, what we see is if we're passing, uh, as I would be here, from uh, right to left, we see people placing a hand on top and physically trying to spin that ball like that. Okay, actually, what you'll learn is that the ball will spin naturally if you get your back hand position in the right place, because it should roll out of your hand. <clears throat> One thing just to demonstrate that, a little quick tip for you, is if you can get hold of some kind of drinks bottle, now this is a Pepsi Max bottle, other drinks bottles are available, um, but I think Coke bottles are the same and, and Fanta ones. But I just want to look for a bottle that's got these, got these kind of dips in the bottom. Okay, and all you're going to do, <clears throat> I've got quite big hands compared to this, so I think I might just get three in there like that. You might get four, um, however you want to do it. And you just want to grip the bottle at the back like that as the rain starts to come in. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is you're just going to grip the bottle like that and you're going to open up your hand so you've got the flat open part of your arm, bring it to your hip. And all you're going to do is you're going to straighten your arm out. And what you'll see is that bottle, as you just naturally straighten your arm out and close that part over, the bottle will spin. Can you see that? So we start there, the bottle spins. And that is just a really easy way to demonstrate how that rubber ball will turn naturally in your hand. Okay, so we'll swap that out and we'll pick up our rubber ball. Again, hopefully an appropriate size for you, um, but any rubber ball will be good. Now we're not gripping right at the bottom like we did on the bottle. We're going to just take it to the side. It was a little bit wet now, <clears throat> but the same principle applies. So we grip it near the back, ball on the hip, open flat palm, and we just turn. Can you see that? So the ball is just turning through the air. And that is how we get our spin. So nothing to do with this hand. This is a control hand, as we'll talk about in a minute. So once you've kind of got used to how to go with a bottle, got used to spinning that ball like that, you can see that turning. <clears throat> then we're just going to start to actually let the ball go, but just for now we're going to practice by putting it up in the air. So we're just going to go one hand and we're just going to spin it into the other. Again, get your hand placement and just spin it. Now you can start to flick your fingers as you let go of it a little bit and that just gives it that nice little spin. If you want you can try going a little bit higher, 
all in all, we're just trying to spin that ball and just show you can see how, if you get that grip right, if you let go of it and just roll those fingers, it'll give you a nice spin. Okay, so we're going to try next is we're then just going to try and add that control hand. And literally, that's all this does. It controls the direction of the ball. It doesn't even necessarily need to help you spin it. Sometimes there's a little bit extra from your thumb on this hand, but it's not actually necessary because all the spin comes from here. And all that one does is just rolls off it and controls it. Remember your 10 points of contact. We don't want to be flat palms trying to spin this ball really hard. 10 points of contact. So again, out in front and just going to use this hand to control it and follow, follow the ball. And all it will do then is you'll be able to start adding a bit of height to it. Try the other hand as well. Swap your hands over. Again, good. Like that. And what you'll see is that what I'm doing is as I finish, as I did with the push pass, is that we're pushing through both hands to where we want the ball to go. Okay, we're not just letting our hands drop down, we're holding them in the direction of the pass. Okay? So uh, the rain just came down just as I was finishing that last clip. Um, but hopefully you got the idea, or still get me now, hopefully you got the idea of what I was trying to say. The idea being that... Um, you can just use that hand to spin the ball and the other one just controls the direction and helps control the hold of the ball. It's something that you can do. Try it with a small ball, try it with a big ball, um, and just try doing it whenever you can. Even if you're sat on the sofa with a little ball, just try flicking it with your fingers. Tennis balls, footballs, everything works. The same principle, just understand that, that what that hand does and how it can turn the ball. And you don't need to force it, it's actually a natural movement that will help you learn to spin the ball. And then on the next little clip, We'll look at how we develop it into an actual, what looks more like a spin pass in a game of rugby. Uh, we hope, if the rain holds off. Okay, good luck. See you on the next video. Okay, so, um, as we did uh, on the video just gone, we looked at one-handed spinning the ball and how, where we grip from that backhand. And what we did with the Coke bottle and then what we did with our rugby ball. Okay, so this time now we're going to do is we're going to be actually passing the ball. Now we're going to start off Again, we want our target that we use for like a push pass. So again, level with our chest, ideally. I've got my brick here that I know I'm always aiming at. Okay, <clears throat> so I step back and I square up to my target because again, we're just looking at this in terms of our technique of how we move the ball. So we get our backhand, ball starts on our hip and we're just pushing the ball through to the target. Okay, hand, ball on the back of the ball, hip here, open arm, close the arm off, ball through to target. Let's go again. Ball at the back, hit through, close to target. Let's do it off both hands. So again, ball at the back, hit through, push to target. Ball, hand on the back, ball on your hip, push to target. Okay, so what we should be seeing there is we should be getting some nice rotations in the ball. It will look scruffy, um, but that's okay. We're just getting into the rhythm of doing it. When we, when we add that second hand, which we're gonna do now, that's when you get the control and that's when it starts to look a bit more of a free flow movement. Uh, obviously, if you, if you want to pass the wall, that's great. If you've got a partner you can pass to, uh, just make sure they give you a target to aim at. So you're not just kind of, so you've got somewhere you're actually trying to throw the ball to. Or you, what you could do as well is make sure you ask your parents first, but hang a sheet off your washing line uh, and then put a little target on that with, a, with some sticky tape or something and you can just pass the ball straight at it. But I want you to make sure you've got a target you're aiming at. Okay, so now we're going to add the controlling hand. Again, just as important as your spinning hand, but it's slightly different in the job that it does. So we get our, our spinning hand, our right hand in this instance, because we're passing off our right on the back of the ball as we've learned, so we can make sure we've got that rotation. And this one's control. And this is where it's comfortable. We don't want it too far forward. We certainly don't want it too far back. So I like it somewhere nice and in the middle here like this. So we've got our hands nice and comfortable on the ball. And all we're doing again, nice and square, ball on the hip, and we're pushing through to target. Ball on hip push through to target. Same off the other hand, swap the hands over, ball on, push through to target, ball on hip, push through to target. Okay, <clears throat> vary the distance that you're doing, so start close if you want to, then open up that space just to get nice and confident in here. We are staying square for the minute because we're just looking at that, our hands motion through. So once we've got ourselves comfortable with our passing, when we're square and with our support hand on it, and you'll get comfortable as to where that second hand needs to go. That's a natural thing. Some people like it a little bit further forward, some further back. I like it in the middle. Whatever we'll find, you'll find is comfortable. But remember, is to control, not to spin. Okay? This is where the spin comes from. When you've done that, we're going to move on to how we were passing the game. So nice and static again. Make sure you've got your target. <clears throat> this time, as if we're running with the ball, we've got two hands on the ball. 
obviously we just load it ever so slightly and then we push through to target. Okay, static, load it onto that hip, push through. Okay, load it, push through. Make sure, <clears throat> again, we're going off both hands. So we load it and we push through. Load it and push through. Next up, as we did with the push pass, we're gonna now walk into our pass. And we talked a little bit about staying square and making sure we can pass off our closed hip, which is making sure, which is our inside leg forward as we pass, as well as our outside leg as we pass. So we're not gonna to worry too much about that, but just as you go through it, just be conscious of where we're passing. Get yourself comfortable first, and then we can look at how we can make sure we're staying square and make sure we can pass off both those hips. Okay, so very simply again, I'm gonna go a little bit wider this time. Same principle, so if I'm passing right to left, back hand on the ball, my other hand roughly in the middle. Again, 10 points of contact, not flat palms. And we're just gonna walk it through. And now we're looking, so it's real slow. So we just walk it through and we're looking, we're looking, but we're keeping our body nice and square. And then we're pushing through to target. Okay, notice how we finish. So make sure after we've thrown that pass, we're pushing through to that target. If you wanna point your fingers just to emphasize that, even better. Let's go again. So I'm going to go a little bit wider, so we're here, we're looking, and we're pushing, but we're staying square. Okay, that makes sense? Um, the next development, the natural one from that, again, if you've got some with you, I haven't got any with me today, but if you've got some with you, they can throw you the pass first, so you're actually having an active catch, you're walking into it, catching the pass, and then pushing through. If you're by yourself, the easiest thing to do is just lift the ball to yourself before you pass it. To make it harder for yourself, maybe flick it a little bit because then you've got to readjust your hands and you've got to react to how that pass comes to you. So just lift the ball up, walking through, looking at your target and finishing your pass off. Okay, that was off my open hip. Now I'm going to try one off the closed hip. So we take the pass off the closed hip and we can do it. See how the body has to change to make that pass when you're going off the closed hip. It's a great practice to do, so make sure you keep doing it. Okay, so you've got a real nice progression through all the exercises there as the sun's coming round. Um, what you wanna be doing, as I say, is nice and static, get your one-handed pass work first, nice and square to target. Then add the second hand, again, square to target. Then you can turn your hips, stay in square and pushing the passes right and left. Then obviously walking into that pass and then finally the active catch before you pass. So it's a nice steady progression. That should be the same for all of our passing objectives, making sure we go off both hands um, and trying the push pass and that spin pass. Vary your distance, make sure you stay square as I, as I keep saying, and that should give you a really nice base to move forward with your passing. Uh, good luck with it all and I'll catch up with you again soon.